Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Sami and I'm the VP of Events of LCS. So if you haven't signed up yet, just use the QR code on the screen so you can have this event added to your Lori experience record. So welcome to our first Learn Tool series. Our speaker today is our very own co-president, Nasher, and he's gonna be discussing how you can create a web portfolio and a bunch of other tips and tricks that you can use. So I'm just gonna pass it on and let him get to it. All right, perfect. I'm just going to change the presentation. You can turn your webcam off too if you want. Uh, and there we go. All right, cool. Hey, oh, let me transition that. Cool. Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Nasher, as Sumi already said. Thank you for the introduction, Sumi. Uh, my name is Nasher, a co president. And today I'll be talking about um, stuff. Actually, I'll move to the uh, title slide. There we go. So today we'll be talking about, so this is a part of our Learner Tool series, which is an ongoing event series that we've moved on from last year. And this today we'll be talking about how you can build a tool set and a web resume for yourself. So let's say you're in first or second year or even third and fourth year and you're like very clueless as to how to get into the industry or how to build yourself up or like you just don't know what to do and where to start. That's quite common with a lot of students. So it's not like a stressful thing to worry about or like you shouldn't feel insignificant just because you don't know what to do because 95% of people or maybe even 99% of people are in the exact same boat as you. So nothing to worry about there. But this presentation should hopefully help you out, tell you, you know, what things you should learn, what things you should, um, what things you should focus on, maybe some new things you might learn, um, and maybe some just cool convenience things you might learn too. So um, this is the agenda that we'll be using for today. Uh, today we'll be talking about the tools and resources that you can get as a student um, for free or for very cheap. Uh, then we'll be talking about, I'll be going over an example web portfolio that I have made for the purposes of the presentation. And we'll, during that presentation, we'll talk about the do's and the don'ts, uh, of your, like, you know, of your website, as well as, you know, layouts that you can use and just some extra, uh, extra, etc. stuff. But yeah. Um, so the first thing I'll talk about is editors and IDEs. So if you've done any programming course, introductory to programming course, you probably recognize the icon on the very far right, which is Eclipse. So most, I think if not all students have used an IDE, it stands for an in, uh, integrated development environment. It's basically a very, 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 very like cool version of Notepad where you can write code, but the program can also like, compile that code for you, execute it, tell you errors, um, give you recommendations on what you can import, give you recommendations on like, you know, what you can do better with the code, all that fun and cool stuff. Um, that's what an IDE is, and it's a very common thing to use as a programmer, or maybe even a computer scientist. And there's some very common choices that people use, but an IDE is usually always based on like what language you're programming in. So uh, for Java and sometimes for C, Eclipse is a very good choice uh, if you're a beginner. Um, or if you are more experienced or you want to just go into the deep end, JetBrains is a company that provides a lot of IDEs. They provide an IDE for like like at least 20 languages. Um, examples that you've probably heard of are PyCharm, IntelliJ, um, and there's like a bunch of other ones, PHP Storm, I think, or something, or WebStorm. Uh, they make a lot of IDEs and they're very like heavy in terms of like being able to run them on your computer as most IDEs are. But I feel like they're very, very, very filled with tools and utilities that you can use. And they're very nice to work with too. So um, the last IDE that I recommend is Visual Studio. Uh, so if you're coding a lot in C, C++, or C Sharp, uh, sorry, C or C Sharp, I think. I'm not sure about C++. Maybe you can do C++ too. I don't remember. But uh, Visual Studio is very good for that too. Uh, not to be confused with Visual Studio Code, which is the one on the very left, uh, the blue one. Uh, they're very confusing names. They literally differ by one word. Um, that's why a lot of people get confused by them. But they're very, very, very different things. Visual Studio is a very, very heavy IDE, which is used specifically for C and C plus or C sharp and C plus plus. And it has a boatload of utilities. You can use debuggers and all that stuff built into it. Um, so those are IDEs and there's a lot of other IDEs too. I think uh, NetBrains or something has like a bunch of IDEs too you can use. And like there's a bunch of older ones too. So feel free and just experiment. Um, but yeah, the next thing is a code editor. So. More than likely, everyone's probably heard of Visual Studio Code or VSC, uh, which is the one on the very top left. So Visual Studio Code is a code editor, which is very different from an IDE. Uh, code editors are on the face level, basically just like Notepad, but they just highlight you know syntax for you in your code, and you can just edit files really quickly on the fly. 
Um, so, you know, you'd think that they're not that good for writing code, but Visual Studio Code itself uh, has become basically like an all-purpose IDE. It's very, very, very powerful. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's basically a text editor, but it has so much uh, extension functionality you can add into it. There's like extensions for like everything. You want to do like, you know, you want like to highlight your like brackets in different colors. There's, one, there's a plugin for that. Like there's, it's very customizable, very extendable. And there's a very lot of things you can do with it. Uh, I, so I highly recommend using VSC for like everything, um, unless it's a very big project. You can use it for Python, small bits of Java, writing C, C++, C Sharp, Ruby, Go, anything JavaScript. Like you can use it for literally everything. I use it like on a daily basis, basically. Um, other code editors, which you might have heard of, is Atom, which is the one next to it. Uh, Atom is one made by GitHub, I think, and it's very lightweight. Uh, it's, it exists. You could use it. It's a choice. Um, so yeah, also that sign in link down there is old, so I wouldn't use that just FYI. I, I think no one updated that one in the chat, but yeah. Um, the two other code editors you see are Vim and Emac. Uh, these are very like, uh, these are very, you might have heard of these are very niche code editors, but they're very powerful. Uh, they're usually, they might not be the most user friendly, uh, uh, like code editors, but they are incredibly powerful, especially Vim itself. Vim is an a code editor that you don't use your mouse in. It's only a keyboard based one. And it can say, if you practice it and learn like all the different built-in stuff that you can do with it, uh, it can save you like at least an hour of like coding every day, just by doing things that you do normally on like VSC or something. Uh, so Vim is very powerful. I personally don't use it, but I, it's incredibly powerful. And if you learn it very, I like highly recommend learning it if you're into that type of thing. Uh, and there's also plugins that for Visual Studio Code that implement Vim into it. So if you like the user interface of Visual Studio Code, but you like the ability of Vim, then boom, you can you can, uh, you can can use that instead. And lastly, I'll call it visual editor. So let's say you're not a programmer or you just don't want to code um, or you're just not in the mood to code or you don't want to learn or whatever it may be. It's not like a bad thing at all. There's a lot of visual editors out there too, which usually get a lot of negativity around them, but they're pretty good. Like there's fine. There's nothing wrong with using them at all. They don't have like every, obviously with code, you can control every little thing with a visual editor you're somewhat limited, but I don't think it's a big deal at the end of the day. Um, so these are some visual editors. So the one on the top left is Dreamweaver DW. That's a Adobe program, which arguably costs a lot of money per month. But if you're a student, they have like a discount type of thing, but it's still pretty pricey. Um, you could get it other ways. I won't say what, but there's easy ways to get Adobe programs. Um, but Dreamweaver is basically a visual editor for building websites and web pages. And I, it's pretty good if you use Adobe already, if you use Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, or Premiere, I recommend using Dreamweaver too. Like if you already know how to use those programs, this should be pretty easy too. Um, if you're into making video games uh, or physics stuff, then Unity at the top right of the visual editor section is also a good choice for beginners. Um, Unity, you probably, if you've played video games, you've heard of the word Unity before. Um, so you can always dabble in that. And the last thing is WordPress in the bottom of that section. So everyone's heard of WordPress probably, or somewhat maybe familiar with it. And it gets a very bad rep of being a very like bad way to make a website. Um, the truth is it's actually, if you don't want to code, it's very good uh, to make a website with. It's just that um, it's, you need to know how to use it properly and how to optimize it. But once you learn and you take some time to use it, I feel like it's very, very cool to use if you don't want to spend the time coding it yourself or you just don't have the knowledge for it. My first website that I still have to this day, because I'm too lazy to change it, or I haven't had the time to change it, is built in WordPress. And you wouldn't be able to tell it's built in WordPress if you looked at it. Most people don't. So yeah, that's another thing you can look into. And all of these things on screen have tutorials and documentation and YouTube videos. So uh, if you feel like you might be interested in something, just literally Google it and you'll probably find a bunch of documentation and tutorials to use it. Um, but yeah, moving on, I think, there we go. Uh, the next thing are cloud services that you might be able to utilize. So let's say you already know the basics of programming and you're making an application or a website. Uh, you're making a Python program or a JavaScript web app or something. Uh, and you want to be able to like, you know, store data in the cloud. Don't want to store, like make your own SQL database, or you want people to submit images and you want to be able to categorize them or, you know, speech recognition or anything else like you want to do, you can utilize cloud services for. So obviously you're not going to make your own AI to recognize speech and do that, blah, blah, blah. You could, but why waste your time doing that if it's already done for you 100 times better, right? 
So uh, these are the three big companies that provide services like this. You've probably heard of a lot of these or maybe seen some of them. Uh, the first one in the middle is the one I recommend the most. It's Microsoft Azure. The one on the very left is uh, Amazon Web Services done by Amazon, yours truly, obviously. And then the last one on the right is Google Cloud. Um, and they all provide a bunch of different services that you can utilize. Um, I'll show you quickly what Azure provides because I feel like Azure is one of the most powerful and it also makes the most money, but you know, that's not important. Um, but I'll show you Azure's, what they offer basically and how cool it is. Uh, so I'll quickly change the screen. So you guys should be able to see this screen right here. Um, this is supposed to be a cooler page, um, but whatever. Um, so basically Azure, this is the Azure website. They provide a bunch of resources so you can utilize AI stuff. So like machine learning, cognitive search, uh, cognitive services, bot services. You can do computing stuff. Let's say you want to host code on the cloud, crunch to like billions of gigabytes of data or something. You can do that. Or you want to make containers for your applications or you want to do like a bunch of other things. There's so many things you can do with Azure. Uh, you want to be able to like, uh, you may, maybe you want some security stuff in your application. You can use Azure Sentinel. Like there's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, the most popular I'd say that they're used for is like hosting stuff and their machine learning stuff. So, you know, categorizing images, categorizing text and all that type of thing. Um, and it's very cool to dabble in and it's very not complicated if you already know the basics of programming. Uh, I once at a hackathon made an application that took Discord messages and categorized them by like negativity and positivity and what they were talking about. And that entire process took like seven lines of code because I used Azure. So not sponsored by them or anything, but Azure is like really good for that type of thing. Um, and yeah, you can always, uh, you can always dabble with that. You know, if you don't know anything about tech speech analysis or recognition, you could always dabble in it. It's really fun. I highly recommend doing something like that in, in your free time. And yeah, those are some places you can check those out. Uh, last thing are domains and DNS services. So let's say you have your own website for you know your personal self or a passion project that you're working on, uh, or you just want your emails to look more professional, right? Um, you should always get a domain. Uh, domains are very dirt cheap for how much you get out of them. Uh, and well, as we'll talk later, you can get them for free as well. Um, so domains, you know, like, you know, lauriercs.ca looks a lot more professional than lauriercs at gmail.com, for example. Um, so that type of thing, obviously we bought a domain for that and it just looks better overall. You get more responses from people. Um, it's a bit of a more, it's in, initially it takes a bit more to set up. Obviously you have to be a bit more technical. I have to look up some YouTube tutorials on it. Um, but I think the payout's pretty worth it. And once you do it once you basically like know the process and you can do it hundreds of times of oh, hundreds and times over um and yeah so these are three of the companies i recommend kind of sometimes um so namecheap at the bottom is my absolute favorite if you have a domain like dot com or dot ca that you want namecheap is great for that type of thing you put in the domain click on the buy button and your credit card and first you're done it's like a very simple process and you're done and they're very cheap it's like 10 bucks to 12 bucks a year for like a cool a normal domain um, if it's a domain like, you know, johnsmith.com, that might cost a lot of money because it has the words John and Smith in it. But if it's like your own personal name or something with a spin on it, then it should be like 10 to 12 bucks. So it's pretty cool for anyone who just wants to make their own portfolio. Um, GoDaddy, on the one on the top right, I usually don't recommend ever, uh, but they do have some like discounts every now and then. Uh, a buddy of mine months ago got like a domain of his name for three bucks a year for five years because like, there's like some sort of discount for Lunar New Year's or something like that. Um, so they do have like really good discounts sometimes that happen. So I'd keep an eye on those, but in the normal day-to-day -day thing, I'd probably use Namecheap. Google domains is the third one. Uh, I've never used them personally. Um, they're a bit, I think like you pay a bit more than like you would with Namecheap, but you get the added bonus of knowing it's a Google. So like safety and security and management's gonna be like a piece of cake cause it's all Google, right? It'll, Using it and managing it's very simple. If you use Google, they have like a nice UI and all that stuff. So if you want to pay an extra bit of money just to make your life a bit simpler, you could go with Google domains too. So yeah. So you might be wondering, we covered a lot of these things and we talked about editors. We talked about like domains and all that kind of thing. Even like cloud services, they all cost money, right? Like, yeah, obviously how do these companies all make money? Um, and you know, you could pay, which some things are worth paying for, but some of them are really not if you're a student, you know, 
already paying tuition and residence fees kind of a lot of money so i always recommend going for the github education pack um a lot of people might have never actually heard of this but i feel like it's one of the most useful things you should know about as a student even if you're not a computer science student you can get a lot out of the github education pack so this is the GitHub Education Pack. This is the website. Um, hopefully, I actually I'll throw it in the chat, and I highly recommend people going through it. But basically, um, you sign up for it. You enter your uh, email from your school, and you enter your university and maybe your first last name address. Blah 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 blah. blah. It takes a couple of days to process, and then boom, you have access to the good GitHub Student Pack, and it gives you a lot of free things that you'd all otherwise have to pay for. For example, uh, I, earlier on, we talked about JetBrains and all their IDEs costing a lot of money. If you want the pro versions of them, like uh, PyCharm or IntelliJ, um, these uh, JetBrains gives you a free subscription to all of their IDEs, to the pro subscription, I think, for free. And you just keep renewing it every year until you're, student, like, until you're not a student anymore. That's pretty worth it, you know what I mean? Uh, Azure gives you $100 credit for free. Digital Cloud gives you $100 bucks too. You get a 12-month subscription to Canva Pro. Uh, Namecheap gives you one year domain name registration for free on like a dot me domain. Uh, there's so much stuff here that you can get for free. I got my dot tech domain, my personal domain from here from get dot tech. Um, so there's a lot of things you can get and I highly, highly recommend just signing up for it and looking for stuff that you might want to use. Even like again, like Canva is free. People, that's not even a computer science thing. You can just use Canva to make art work or whatever. So that's 12 month subscription right there. Um, Bootstrap Studio, if you want to make your own website visually without having to code it, you can use Bootstrap Studio and you can get the free license for it while you're a student. So a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff you can go through, as you can see. And yeah, I highly recommend people going through that later whenever they have time. And these are some of the things I recommend getting. Um, so domains, you can get a Namecheap domain for free. You can get, get you can get the .tech domain for free and domain.com has a bunch of deals too. Um, you can get Canva. Again, we already talked about that. And JetBrains. And Replit has like a hacker plan. So Replit's like an online IDE that people use a lot as well. So that you can get a free uh, plan off of them too. And then if you wanna learn, like they have a, a lot of learning resources on here, a lot of courses and stuff. If you wanna learn Go, they have Go Rails, which has like like a lot of tutorials that you can get for free that you'd have to pay for. Uh, Thinkful's alike as well. And Interview Cake helps you with like interview, software interviews and stuff like that. And you can get tutorials of those for free too. And then a bunch of the cloud services also give you credit. Amazon Web Services gives you like 300 bucks or something for a year as a student. And then Azure and DigitalOcean do too. So there's a lot of things you can get with it. Feel free to sign up for it and utilize it before you graduate because you can't get it afterwards. So yeah, that's that. And then the last couple of things I want to talk about are Discord. So uh, Discord's become pretty mainstream over like the last year, I'd say. And it's a very good resource to use. I'll switch over to my Discord screen real quick as well. So the first thing for Discord I'd recommend is utilizing the Laurier Student Hub. So recently uh, Discord added student hubs, which are basically every university has like a, 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 data, a center like database of all the servers that are related to the school and you can just look through all of them. So here you can find servers for like everything. Um, there's like 56 servers on here right now, like anything from specific courses. So you can go to like, you know, uh, classes and subjects and you find all these different servers for different courses that you might be in. And you can go to those. I'll zoom in a bit. Actually, I just noticed it's a bit small. Uh, there you go. Uh, if you want to be a part of the clubs, like, you know, LCS, cough, cough, or like any of the other clubs at Laurier, you can always just join those Discord servers too. And there's some other like study service too that you can join and miscellaneous stuff too. So I highly recommend utilizing the student, uh, the, the school hub, uh, especially if you're in first or second year and you haven't been familiar with this university for a while. So yeah, uh, as well as that, the LCS server, uh, obviously I'm shilling it out because you know it's our server but I highly think it's very useful we have a course for every we have a course channel for every single CS and math course as well as some of the physics and statistics courses and data science courses um, it is very active there's like five we have like 5,000 messages a week type of thing so it's crazy but yeah we have like all these different channels if you want to try it about different courses you can just go to that uh, you can react to the course here in underneath courses and then boom, you have access to all those channels and people use these on like a daily basis type of thing. So yeah, I'd highly recommend using that. But lastly, actually is one more thing is the partner section on our discord server. So um, we have partner clubs that we're partnered with and a lot of them will be running events with, and this list is only going to get bigger. 
I highly recommend going to our partners channel and joining all the Discord servers of our partners. We'll have a lot more here in like a couple weeks, so look out for that. Um, but yeah, that's also another small thing I'd probably be cool to add to that. So, so um, as a, as a little summary, um, if you don't have any coding experience at all, uh, before we hop into this, so we're going to be go to going over the web resume now. So we're kind of done like the tools section of the presentation. Um, it, we're going to be talking about like a basic web resume. I won't be coding anything in front of you guys. I'll just be explaining some stuff and some code to you. So don't be worried about that. But if you don't have any coding experience at all, I highly recommend checking out a website called W3 Schools. A lot of people might already be familiar with it. If you've ever struggled ever in coding, you probably at one point checked out this website. Uh, W3 Schools provides tutorials for like every single language that I can think of. They have so many tutorials, especially like uh, even on courses. They have courses on like using Excel and Google Sheet functions on data science, statistics, machine learning, as well as all these languages and all these like scripts and all that type of thing. Um, so I'd like super recommend using them. They also have like a visual interactive editor you can use and get you can get marked on it and stuff like that, too. Um, so, yeah, that's also a really cool thing you can use. Um, and I don't think I need to link it. It's just literally W3 schools. So you can like find it straight away as well as that. Um, we have a, a, the LCS pods program, which is basically, um, a program where you can join. It's on our link tree and our discord and our website. Actually, might maybe not be on our website yet, but it's definitely on our link tree. Um, but basically it's a program where you get to work on small projects, either on your own or with a group of people or using like cab Kanban and agile philosophy. Uh, so if you want to get a feel for like how the workplace is going to be, maybe get some experience with, like, you know, with some web development or some software development stuff. I'll join on there too and learn some stuff as well as checking out our github so our github um so github.com slash laurie acs will have a bunch of resources in it that people can refer to resources like for mental health for coding for all that type of thing um we'll be releasing in, in like a couple of days i think so some, some resources to that so all you know, feel free to check that out i highly recommend it it's just a repository of knowledge and information that you can check out uh lastly um, again, if you can't code and you don't want to use a visual editor and you don't want to learn, uh, you can use a template. That's what I did for this presentation. Uh, use a template and no one's going to shame you for it. As long as the licensing agreement says that you can use it, um, make sure if it says to credit them, make sure you credit the original author of it as a sector, et cetera. But yeah, no one's going to care if, you know, if you apply to a job, they're not going to mock you because you use a template you know, website, you can just use it. No one's going to, no one's going to notice. There's a template for a reason, right? So there's no shame in using the template. So before you move on, I also want to mention GitHub as a tool. Uh, we'll be, we'll be actually doing an entire presentation on GitHub further down sometime in a couple months or something. I'll put an event on it. Uh, but GitHub, if you've heard of it is a version control platform, which might sound scary or something, but it's basically a platform where people share, contribute, and co collaborate on code. So GitHub is very popular with a like anybody who codes. If you want to, you know, show off your projects and use it as a portfolio, you can. If you want to make collaborating on code with your friends or your work friends or whatever it is easy, then like using Git and GitHub is a no-brainer. Um, or if you just want, you know, just look at other people's code and fork it, maybe. Uh, maybe add add some recommendations to code. Maybe, maybe like fork your own project off of existing code. You can do that too. Um, you can go to GitHub.com to like get started with that. Uh, there's also all other alternatives to GitHub. There's GitLab and there's Bitbucket. Uh, those aren't as popular. GitLab's pretty cool too. I'd recommend that highly. But GitHub's like the easiest and like the mainstream one that I recommend going with. Um, but yeah, it's just a platform where people build software and collaborate together and showcase their own work. And I highly recommend anybody who uh, has future prospects of going into like the work industry to have a GitHub account and have some activity on it because employers really like to see if you're like, concerned about this point, you know, uh, employers really like to see activity on GitHub and people love seeing the fact that you maybe contributed to other like open source projects that are public. Um, that's like, you know, it shows a lot of skill from you. So, um, yeah, it's a little tip, but GitHub, it's always good to have an account on there. So we'll be, uh, this is the part of the presentation. I'll be showing off the website that is for this presentation. Um, so let me change scene again. So this is the website that I have made. It's a template that I've heavily modified, like very heavily. 
um it had like a lot of stuff i didn't like colors theming layout stuff and i changed it around um so this website might seem very complicated and you're like oh i don't even know how to where to get started on coding this bro like what, what, are, you, what are you talking about not sure um so i got a question actually I'll quickly over the question do employers care if you put our school projects on git so i'll say that um employers is like it's cool to have like i have my school projects on git even though i used sorry on github even though i used github before like university and like school projects and stuff it's cool to have on there just to show what you know and what you've learned in class but i highly recommend supplementing that with actual projects so like um you know it doesn't have to be something fancy as long as it's something that's like if you if you've never coded before then making something basic like a calculator is completely valid you know because you're learning but if you already know the basics of programming and you want to just slightly stand out a bit more i highly recommend doing something like you know it's automating a task in your daily life that you uh you know just like, like for example let's say you like different times of the day you have different colors of rgb lights that you use in your room for some reason right like a lot of people have rgb lights nowadays right so let's say you want to like you know during the day i want x color during the night i want y color during like this time i want z color right you can automate that with code like very simply through python like you can write a basic python script to do that um with like a nice user interface and if you do that throw it on github you know throw it on your resume talk about it with um with employers and stuff like that um and just like update it every now and then on github too like update the versioning add some new features to it every now and then when you're bored um don't just keep it for your school projects i'd say uh especially if you want to go into like the workforce later on but yeah just add something that is useful and it doesn't have to be big just something useful because like if you want to like show off like everyone's on a calculator app no one wants to see it like every, no one like is going to be impressed if you have a calculator on your github uh, unless you're very new to programming so it's a recommendation but anyway this is the website um it's just a basic basic website that i designed with the template um you can contact section here i have a little uh like a referral section here a display of some projects you may have worked on uh, some of your skills or whatever you want to put here like numbers or whatever and then some of the service if this is this is only if you actually like offer services if you're like a freelance developer or something i was but like most people aren't so you don't need to put the section here you can you can add just more personal information about yourself here too like your interests and stuff just to add some personality and flair and this is like a nice basic like about me section as well that you talk about here too so and then the top section has like the nav bar that just links the different parts of the website so you have that and then you have this learn more button which scrolls down here and then you just have this uh typing text which is very if you've ever looked at any developer website this is a very generic thing that they all do i just did it because you know why not type of thing so yeah um this isn't complicated to do trust me it seems very like it is complicated obviously if you made this from like absolute zero with everything made by hand this would take you like months to make <laughs> like you're not going to do that but um i can show you the code for it and everything so i'll pull up visual studio code whoops that's not what i meant to do sorry about that so this is my Visual Studio code. This is the project. I'll just close everything for now. So these are all the folders and files that make up this website. Index.html is like the main file I'll be covering basically. Um, and if you have every ever like, most developers know that they say that they know HTML. So this is, this should come very naturally to most people. Um, but basically, uh, it's just a bunch of like all the styling and all the fancy animations and stuff are modules that other people have made that are very popular i just imported them and just loaded them in so you don't even need to style anything on your own you can use stuff like bootstrap font awesome animate owl icons everything like you're not going to sit there and style every button and text and animation on your own and if you are good luck i don't know why you do that right just make your life easier for yourself so yeah um we'll start off with like well i'll, I'll go over the different parts of the code i won't go through everything because a lot of it's copy pasting it, like genuinely once you understand the basics of mo most of this does you don't need any explanation you can just copy paste it and use context to figure out what to put there but basically this is like the important information of the website so the title of the web page you know the tags and the content to describe the website the description and then the viewport so the viewport never changes but and these are some things that are imported from like different libraries and stuff to animate stuff and make it look cool and nice and pretty this is the icon that shows up in the in the web browser so if i go back here Oh, the favicon is this right here 
Uh, and then besides that, we scroll down a bit. Um, and this is the part that shows the nav bar right here. And it's commented with these little yellow arrow thingies. So the nav bar is this top part that shows you where all the pages are and stuff. And it doesn't take a lot of code to figure out what this does. So basically a lot of this is just setup code. Um, again, this is a template I used, so your code could look a lot cleaner. I personally would have made this a lot cleaner than, I, than it is here, but you know, to each their own. But this is the main part, like you can add your own sections here. You can add like, you know, home about services, portfolio and contact. If you wanted, I could add a new section here uh, called like, um, we can just call it, you know, um, uh, interests, right? Like right there, boom. And that'll add it to the website. I could probably load it up actually, if you give me a second, let me, let me try it. I'll try loading this page up and yeah, see if it works or not. There you go. You have interests now up here too. So I'm locally hosting this now so you can see it. Um, but yeah, there is an interest right there. Pretty easy to do. It happens instantly. If I want to get rid of it again, I can just delete the lines, press save, reload this and then it's gone. So very simple. Again, I, it's, it's a lot of copy pasting. Like it's, there's no, like, even if you've never programmed it for it, but you have logic, like you can very easily navigate this and style it on your own. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the nav bar. Pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to do any of this code at all. This is all from the template. So <clears throat> the next section is the header stub, also known as the hero to some people. So that's just this section right here, which is my name is Nasha Rao with the, this little flowy text and the learn more button. And again, this is the title of the page. These are the different things that will cycle through in the text with the comma separating it. And then this is the learn more button and you can make a link to whatever you want. So this links to about, I could make this link to Google if I wanted to. And now if I go here, press refresh, click on learn more, it opens Google. Who could have guessed? So it's very simple to figure out what to change and stuff like that. I can change this to just one just to see what that does. And now it says one developer. See, very easy. You can copy paste stuff. Bada bing, bada boom. You can copy this as well if you wanted to. Learn more too. Another button there. And now you have two buttons here for whatever reason. So yeah, that's the header set setup. And then there's also like stuff like the background and stuff that you use. So here's what the, the background I use. I just took this image from like Google images, I think, which you shouldn't do. You should use images that you have licensing rights to or like are royalty free, but you know, whatever. Uh, so that's this image right here and it's stored locally. So boom, that's that. So this is the about start. This is the about section. This is right here, which seems very big until you remember that again, this is all a copy and paste. So if I scroll down here, the about me is made up of two columns. Basically, uh, this is one column. This is the simple one. It just has paragraphs that you can add and subtract from. And then this left column has two rows on it. First row has this image and this text. And the second row has these like percentage thingies over here. Um, and these are controlled. So the right side is controlled here. Uh, I can just add another paragraph, copy this, paste this, and just call it, whoops, just say like, you know, uh, I messed that up pretty bad actually, but I also, let's just paste it in here, whoops. I'm professional, I swear. Let's just do that, let's see if that works, that should probably work. Yeah, there we go. It added this another paragraph with like half of the text that I kept from that copy paste. But yeah, you can add and subtract paragraphs from here and it automatically scales and stuff. <clears throat> so like, you know, you don't have to worry about when it gets small and big, what it look like. Cause that's got, that gets handled automatically by whatever module I'm using to import that type of thing. Um, on the right side over here with all these like fancy little like percentage bars or whatever, which I think also load on reef. No, they don't. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> but those are here. A bit more complicated to look at. They're a bit more annoying to look at, but all you do is you copy paste this right here. So this makes up the Java section. So right here, Java, you'd give it whatever title you want here. And then you give it whatever percentage you want to display here. And this is the percentage that gets displayed in the actual bar. So yeah, that's pretty self explanatory too. And you can copy paste as many times as you want. If you only knew Java, you know, you could just get rid of all these other ones here and call it a day. Do that, do that, click refresh. And now you only have Java, so and that's that section. And then this top section right here uh, with name, email, and phone with my picture in it. Uh, the image is literally right here. Like you can change it to whatever you want. It's contained in the image folder in, in this folder right here. You can use, you can do whatever you want with it. 
as well as you can add as many of these uh, little title and subtitle sections as you want. So name, nausea, email, my email, and phone number, my phone number. So pretty simple so far. Um, and that's the that's the basically the about section. So the services section I won't go into because it's very similar to the other sections, and you most people won't need to do this, so you don't need to have that section. So I'm just gonna make it small. There we go. So uh, the stats section is the statistics section. So that's this section right here, this one right here, with a cool parallax background to it. Um, so this is also very simple, copy paste again, like everything in this website is. Um, so I think it's this div, yeah. So you can copy paste this as much as you want. Add another section. So now you have two hackathons that you attended, uh, four times each, there you go. Um, you can edit the text as well. Unique client served, user experience, hackathons attended, blah, 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 blah. As well as what it counts to. So the count is here. So counter four, four, 70, 10, and yeah. Um, and I, there's like a lot of options to style this type of thing. So this right here, uh, so each div, if you've noticed, has like a bunch of words in it with numbers that look really weird. But this is like a, a kind of a small language that you can use to style stuff. And I highly recommend looking it up. I think it's Bootstrap's language. I'm not exactly sure. I don't use it a lot. But um, like you can edit this to like make your things look different. I think if I make this the number two and it will change what it looks like slightly. I think it did modify it slightly. I can't tell what it is, but you know, uh, you can, if you really want to be very like in depth with this and use a template and heavy, heavily modified, you can like no issue. You just have to dig down and figure out what everything does first. So yeah, the portfolio section is this section, which has, I think the most interactivity, you can click on stuff and it'll take you to like different websites of where it's located, um, different like repos and stuff like that. So whoops. Um, so wait, that's down here. Yep. So um, this is the title and the subtitle that you see up here. And then <clears throat> you can change. Uh, so this is the right here is the I think that's this section right here. And it can give it like, you know, the title. Um, what I guess I call I use types here. So this is an e commerce website. This is a business website. This is a discord bot. So you can do that here. And I use a slash to separate them because it looks nice. And then the date that I made it at. And it's very simple. Again, like you can change to whatever you want. You can mess around with the styling if you really want to with the images and stuff. You can change what type of image animation happens, how big the image is, what it links to, uh, blah, 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 blah. If you know CSS, this should be very natural to you. But yeah, that's the portfolio page. And I would link some of my really cool projects that I've worked on here. These are very old because this website's from last year. Um, but you can definitely just like add, add whatever you want here. Also just a note, like these are some sections I use in this template website. You can add whatever sections you want. This doesn't have to be like a portfolio website. You can use a template for whatever you want. So don't restrict yourself in that manner either. Um, the last section is the, <laughs> it's the recommendation section. So, um, so this right here. Um, so this section is basically it'll automatically cycle through the different people that are set up here and it'll display their comments and their image. So, this is our ex-president Abdul Bader from last year, if you were curious about that. But that is here, right here, testimonials is what it's called. So you just add different entries using this right here. You copy paste this div over and over and over again. So if I add the basil entry a couple more times, probably just copy paste it three times, reload the page. Now there is, okay, there should be multiple of it. There's not, that's probably just because I messed something up or it's limited to three, but I'm gonna undo all that real quick. There we go, cool, that's undoed. But uh, yeah, you can just edit this text, you can edit the name of the person, and you can just keep on adding and subtracting stuff as much as you want. Um, and it's very cool to have, especially if you've done like web dev, if you've done work for other people, like freelance stuff, um, a lot of, um, like a lot of um, uh, employers really like to see that you've done your own entrepreneurship, and this is a good way to show it. So, um, you can always link to the people who've also made those comments about you, so yeah. The last, last section is the contact form, which depending on who you are, you might or might not want. It's a very simple form that you just enter your message, your subject, your email, and your name from. Or you, I also have another column here where you can just and contact me in any way you want instead. <clears throat> so that's made up of um, this section right here, which has uh, your name, 
your email subject and please write something for us right here um as well as you can have the get in touch section which has this my number my email and then a bunch of icons to my social media here too um and yeah that's basically the majority of the website i have this little small section here and then this this stuff right here is just a necessity this is like all loading all the scripts that make all the animations and the graphics stuff happen so it's not that important to know about um, and you can read up on it you can add your own packages if you want if you want to have custom functionality that i don't have here like 3d animations or something or particle effects you can always just import the libraries for those too um and yeah uh also like you don't have to use html and css i usually highly unrecommend like i never recommend making a website in html and css alone like raw but if you do go that route it is very simple to do as well as long as you copy paste everything uh if you want to get a bit more organized and a bit more uh, scalable um, using react and JavaScript is always an option that's highly recommended in my opinion it basically makes a lot of this dirty looking code very concise and clean um, and readable without making it too complicated to code all you still do is use HTML and CSS but um, it's all like car prim car car compartmentalized into little like bundles and stuff that you can reuse over and over again like variables basically so um, yeah but that's this website. Uh, I'll quickly go over some things that you should and shouldn't do from a UI point of view. So uh, the website, like a website, I used, like last year I did this presentation. I had like a bunch of examples that I used, but I'm not going to do that this time. Um, but basically, there's a bunch of things you can use that to like make sure that your UI and UXD is pretty good. Like a lot of people probably have never taken a UI course or a UXD course. So um, you might not be the most artistic person either. So some things I highly recommend using is fontpair.co. So if you're working on a new website and you, I, I use this for every single new website I've worked on, which are, I've worked on a lot of websites. So every time I open a new project, I spend hours on this website to figure out what pair of fonts I want to use together. Cause you always want to have like a title font and then a text font. Um, you don't want to use any old fonts. You want to use stuff that looks nice together. Otherwise people are just going to click off your website. Um, and that's very important. And I just use fontpair.co to generate font pairs for me. It shows you a lot here that you can use. They have like a, a bunch that you can scroll through and see what you like. You can also type with them too in here. If you want to see what they would look like, you know, hi, my name is Nosh or whatever. Then you can have your like stuff here. So cool website, highly recommend it. Uh, the next website I recommend is coolers.co, which generates color palettes for you. Um, and it's also made by some of this nice guy who just took us a time to just make it for people but basically it generates color palettes for you these are colors that work well together um, from a bunch of different perspectives psychologically ui uxd um printing and rendering and all that type of thing so you'll be like it's a good palette way to use good palettes because you never want to pick random colors that you just like because nine out of ten times they probably don't work well together um so you can just click on generate again to like generate new colors or you can i think press spacebar too right yeah so you can just press spacebar and generate different color palettes until you like one. And if you like two colors, let's say I like this color and this color, then I can lock those two colors in, press spacebar, and I'll toggle the other three colors until I like something. And these other three colors will try to use these two colors and match with them. So it won't give you random colors either. So let's say I like this and this now. I'll just like that last color to figure out what I want. And yeah, and then you can tell like all these colors go well together with these color palettes here. So yeah. Um, I highly recommend using coolers as well for any project that uses some sort of interface, website, um, desktop application, video, whatever it may be. It's a good thing to use that too. So, but yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Um, besides that, uh, there's a bunch of other things. You can look up so many things on how to make a good website online too, in terms of the layout and stuff like that. The, the, the easiest thing to note is just make it simple, make it nice to look at. Um, use Figma. That is a good point, Donner. I totally forgot about that. Uh, you can use Figma to prototype your websites. I don't know how I didn't even think of including that. Um, Figma is a website you can use to prototype your websites so that you don't go in guns blazing without any source of like, how do I make this website? What, it should, look, what should it look like? Yada, yada, yada. So for example, I will show off our software engineering project that I worked on a while back. Um, so you can prototype your websites in Figma, um, so that you know what you're doing beforehand. So like, for example, these, like these don't look that good, obviously, whatever, like they're, it's for a project. So it's whatever, 
but um having a layout of what your pages should look like on your website what they should interact how they should look like make sure that they're all co follow a color palette etc etc is really cool um and this is how you do it you just make different frames with different parts of your page in different states and it makes sure that whenever you're making the website if you want to make a change like you've it looks pretty cool thank you downer but it, it's a cool way to make your website and then make so if you just make your website without having this done you'll probably go through a lot of like small changes while you're making it and it'll be like oh i should change that i should change this blah blah blah, blah. and it gets very annoying but if you plan it all out beforehand like this then you'll probably make the changes on here with the added benefit that you don't have to code any of this you can just like it's all drag and drop stuff right um so if you want to make any changes you'll have made them already before you start coding so it'll be a lot of a less hassle while you're coding stuff <clears throat> but I highly recommend using Figma as well for prototyping. But yeah, let me switch back to the presentation. Um, but that's basically everything I have for the web portfolio part two. If anyone has any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. I, we already answered a couple, but yeah. Um, these are some additional resources you can use. So the link tree, our link tree is where you can find all of our links. So that's also where you can sign up if you haven't already signed up for this event. Sorry, regist re like registered or signed in for this event. That's where you can do that. Um, we also have our uh, resource bank, which will also be on our link tree on our GitHub as well, which will be released in a couple days. There you can find resources on mental health and other things like, you know, where you can basically all the information I provided here will be heavily expanded on and in different files for you to look at and read through and look, to look through links. As well as that, the student union, Laurier Student Union has a bunch of services and programming you can refer to, such as Foot Patrol and the, the Food Bank and all the things like that. And at the end of that, you also have the Laurier Wellness Center, which is on both campuses, um, and you can always check them out too. But yeah, that's the presentation. Please uh, sign in if you haven't already. Um, Dana Walto, how do we get Fang? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> uh, what did you use to create the website? I missed it when I was heading to the toilet. Um, so for the website, I used a template, uh, a CSS and HTML template that I downloaded and very, very heavily modified. Um, it's made with plain HTML, CSS, and it uses some JavaScript modules to like load the animations and stuff. Um, so yeah, you can, I literally just Googled nice looking software developer portfolio template on Google and I found one that I liked and I edited it for the presentation. Um, it's also on GitHub. So if you do want to refer to the code that I looked at today, it is on the GitHub. If it's not there, it's on my GitHub, I think. So I will, I will put that on our Laurier CS GitHub page for you to refer to. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, if you have any feedback, please leave it to us with that QR code. And please sign into the event so that your Laurier experience record has track of it. Otherwise, that's the end of the presentation. And thank you for coming. Um, I think I should talk about like the upcoming events that we have as well, since that's not included on the slideshow. But uh, upcoming events we have our uh, review session i think the review i don't know if it's happening next week or the week after since this week is reading week i'm not sure actually but uh, it'll be on our calendar that we released a while back it's all it'll also be on our link tree and our discord and on our social media and literally everywhere else that we shill ourselves all the time um, as well as that we'll have a second learner tool series that will be happening sometime this year this term as well We'll be having our Meet the Professionals event, which is our like big, big, grand scheme event. Um, info about pods. Can you talk about the pods? What skills do you think we should showcase in our first projects before? I'll answer the pods question at the end. Um, what skills do you think we should showcase in our first projects before a first placement? So um, I highly recommend for your first placement to have some work done um, on like a personal or side project or a commission um, on something that you haven't done in class. So all of the employers usually know the basic stuff of what you do in class when you cover. <clears throat> um, I would recommend, so if you're applying for like front end jobs, for example, or, or like website developer jobs, I recommend um, having some sort of website made in React or like, or, or Angular or whatever other framework that you like to use in JavaScript, um, have that. And have it on your GitHub with like a nice like way to look look at it. Have it hosted somewhere, maybe Google hosting or sorry Firebase hosting. Um, but like whatever you're interested in, whatever job you're trying to get, cater your personal projects to that too, which should happen naturally, to be honest. But um, like 
I have a bunch of projects that I like to work on, a bunch of ones in Java and JavaScript and Python. Um, it sort of depends. Um, and yeah, um, when do you guys make a decision for first year reps for those who applied? Uh, if you applied for our hiring, that closed today. I think it's closing tonight or it'll close or it closed yesterday or closing tomorrow. Uh, you'll get an email from us within a couple of days, so don't worry about that. Um, we won't. We haven't forgotten about you guys. Don't worry. Uh, info about pods. Um, you will get more. So if you've applied for pods, you'll hear back. Um, all the information for pods is on our Instagram right now, on our social media posts, as well as Discord. Uh, if you want more information, uh, you'll actually kind of have to wait till like we are finalized with pods, like who we've hired. I highly recommend applying to it. Um, I highly recommend applying to it. And like, if you don't like it afterwards, you can always talk to Obi, who's leading the program. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend applying to it. And once you've applied, you'll get a lot of information on it. But if you want the very like abstract definition of it, uh, there's two programs. There's the like the the group project where Ob along with his team will assign you guys projects to work on in groups of six, I think, or three or whatever. Um, and you'll be working on like a nice little project that you can showcase on your resume and your portfolio too. As well as there'll be solo projects that you can work on too. So if you don't want to work on a team and you just want like <clears throat> every like small projects you can like work on in your own time and showcase as well, those are also an option that you can uh, choose too. So. If you do like, if you do want to like expand your portfolio before you apply to your first job, um, apply to pods. It's a really good way to do it. Um, we'll be helping you along through the way too, so you won't have to do everything alone. And it's like on your own pace type of thing. So if you don't want to do it very quickly, you don't have to. You can, you can do the solo projects instead. Um, what does the content creator position do? Um, create content and help edit content, like literally YouTube content. So we, we're trying to release like YouTube series and stuff too, and YouTube videos, as well as uh, maybe like next term, especially a bit more, starting to use like our social medias like TikTok or something. Uh, I don't know if we'll do that yet or not, but like, you know, uh, it's really cool to interact with people on social media like TikTok. I don't, I don't use it, but like it's very good to reach out to people with. So uh, you'd be making content like that, as well as like YouTube content and stuff too. And maybe some like streaming um like more streaming than we already do for our events so yeah i think that was all the questions though if anyone has if no one else has any questions that's the rats wrap for the presentation thanks for all the follows by the way everyone's been following i haven't been saying thanks for the follows but really appreciate it my voice is dying as you can hear so um also if you haven't signed in again please sign in um the pods link in the discord takes me to type form um, yeah, so basically on our Instagram, we made a post for pods. It has a long, long caption that you can refer to. I can actually pull that up if you'd like. Um, but it has all the information you want, you, you'll need for now. Um, I kind of already explained it, like, you know, two programs, group and solo, um, projects that you can showcase on your GitHub and your resume and your portfolio, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, check out our Instagram if you want, like, a long caption describing what it is. But that's what basically what it is. But yeah, thanks for coming. I uh, appreciate it. And I think that's a wrap. So I think I will. What if no Instagram? You don't have to have an Instagram account to check out our Instagram. You can just like, you can just look at it. I will link it real quickly. So yeah, you don't, you don't need an Instagram account to like look at our Instagram. Don't worry about it. It's like a public account. So. Um, here, I'll give you the exact link to our post actually so that, but yeah, thank you everyone for coming out. Appreciate it. I'm going to end the stream now. Have a good night, everybody. And have a good Thanksgiving uh, weekend. So yeah.